Hey and welcome back to part 2. So in this part we're going to be looking at adding a couple more adjustment layers and maybe to pull the focus to the centre of the scene. Um, as you can see this has already got a blur, uh, vignette on it so what we're going to be doing is creating something else, something called a blurred vignette. Uh, there probably is a proper name for it, this is just what I call it. Um, so if you do know the proper name for this technique maybe throw it down in the comments let us know. So the first thing we want to do is shift A and add in an adjustment layer and move it up to the top like we did before. We also want to drag it out, so make this the length of the movie clip, so you can also... So you can just copy this and paste it here, if you want to. Oh, we also want to rename this so we know what uh, adjustment layer it is. So I'm going to call this a blurred vignette. Oh, try and spell it properly. Okay, so now we've named this, we can um, add an effect strip to it, since we've already got it selected. So what we want to do is press Shift A, and we want to add a Gaussian Blur. So this Gaussian Blur, if now it's selected, we can go down here to the side panel and just increase the amount of blur on the X and the Y. So I'm going to just say maybe 20 on the X, and the same for the Y. So as soon as we do that, we can see that everything's turned blurry, which we don't want everything to be you know, blurred out. What we want is just for a vignette shape to be blurred out. And there's a, there is a couple of ways to do this. I'm just going to show you the way I do it pretty simple. What we need to do is select everything, so press A and then press A again to select everything, press G to grab it, and we just want to move it up one layer. And we're going to be adding uh, an image, which you can download, I'll put a link in the description if you want to download this, or simply just make your own. It's a, a basic image, vignette image. So this is what it looks like. So we want to increase the uh, the length of this, make it to the length of the clip as well. And the reason why we put it on the bottom is so we don't actually see it in the render when we render it off. We're just going to use this as a shape. So what we want to do is, like say, apply that blur just to be around the edges, not in the middle. So select the Gaussian blur. And then what we can do is down here in Effect Strip, go down. Let's add a modifier to it. And we want to add a mask. So if you can't see it, just scroll down and select Mask. If you've used Masks before, you probably just select, uh, change it from Strip to Mask and then select the Mask from this list here. And there would be one here if we went and created one in the Movie Clip Editor. But we don't actually need to do that. What we can do, since we can use the Vignette Shape to, uh, yeah, to use as the Mask. So instead of selecting Mask, leave it on Strip and then we can select which strip we want to use. So as you can see, we can use any strip that's on the um, in the modifiers. So we're using the vignette as the mask, and we can see it's not completely working right now, so we do need to tweak it a little bit. So with the Gaussian blur selected, we want to change the blend type. So just scroll back up, change this from replace to alpha over, like so. As you can see, it's still still not working the way we need it. It's blurry on the middle, but it's sharp on the outside. So we just want to flip the, um, yeah, just want to invert the colors. So we're going to select the vignette. And then what we can do, we can just give it um, a modifier. We can give it a curves modifier, I guess. Thinking if there's an easier way to invert it from here, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to give it a curves modifier. And then I'm just going to change the direction. So drag this one over here and this one over here so now the colors will be flipped you can see straight away there's blurry on the edges and sharp image on the middle okay so now we've got the blurred vignette done we can see it, can, it shows up quite clearly on the first clip but on the other two clips it doesn't show up that well and that's because there's no vignettes on the other two clips which so what we can do is just add a vignette which is very basic and it's going to be pretty much the same way that we did the Gaussian blur we just use a mask So we want the vignette to be underneath the blur, so let's grab the blur and the blur vignette. Just press G to grab and move it up one slot. So now we can press Shift A and add in an effect strip. And we want to use color. For some reason it's added it down here, so let's just press G to grab. Let's just grab this up. And oh, if you accidentally just move it to the side like this, just Control Z, press G and then Y, it'll constrain it on the Y axis only. So a little tip there for you. Okay, so as everything else, we want to increase the length of this. So 
Let's just paste in that length that we already copied. And then down some modifiers. Let's give this a mask. And just like before, we're going to use the vignette strip. It's kind of working. And what we need to do is just change the blend type from cross to alpha over. And then all we need to do now is just lower the opacity. So just lower this down um, to something that seems right for you. Now remember there's already a vignette on this first clip so you can see if we turn it on off this one's going to be darker than the rest so I'll just move to the other one. So that's a tip as well if you're going to color grade things with the VSC don't color grade something or put a vignette on it um, wait until the end when you've got all the clips together so you don't get any um, <laughs> any trouble with it later on. So as you can see that uh, adding a blurred vignette and also a vignette as well it just it draws your eyes to the scene a little bit more to the middle I guess and these are just added touches that you don't have to do necessarily I find it's uh, adds a little bit more interest to the scene. So make sure you refresh the sequencer before you're about to render, that's always important. And um, we do want to change a few settings while we're here. We can go to output and place where the output of the folder is, where it will be saved to. You also want to choose the file format, maybe if you want to render out as an image sequence or a movie, movie file, choose whatever you want. We don't need to worry about the sampling but we do need to worry about the encoding since we've got audio in the scene. Um, these settings should work as fine as standard. Um, what we can also do if we select the audio just as we can with the movie clip we have a few options that we can change so we can increase or decrease the volume, the pitch uh, and the pan so it's on the left or the right side of the speakers so you have a few options that you can play around with as well if you need to but since we have audio we need to record the audio codec so we just want to select audio codec and choose one of these that works for you. I usually use MP3 since it works fine. So yeah, go ahead and then render it and uh, you've added a little bit more to the scene. So hopefully this tutorial did help. I know the first one was very basic and this one's a little bit more advanced but nothing too. Um, so yeah, hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like and thanks for watching.